There we are. We've got an array of different sorts of plants there, from uh, salvia, salvias and verbena bonarensis digitalis, uh, veronicas. Uh, there's everything. Some hookahs, uh, uh, lupins, you know. And that's off Proctor's Nursery in Staffordshire. So if you're looking for plants, give them a ring on 01782 504 739. Speak to Dan. He's the man. Just want to show you the sand this morning. Uh, we've covered it up, had a sheet on it, and as you can see, the sand is very moist. If you hold that, it sort of binds together. So you need very little water in your mix. We're using this uh, Bostic uh, concentrated mortar plasticizer. We just use a, a little bit of this. You just squeeze it, and it goes to the top. And we're just using a small amount. Well, this is what I've been talking about for a while, is about how much water you actually put in your in your mix. And uh, this bucket was filled up to that line there. So I haven't even done less than a quarter of a bucket. And this is the mix that we've got. We're using a ratio of five to one. Five sharp, one cement. And you can see just a little bit of plasticizer. And there is very little water content because too much water actually makes your your more your, your bedding mix weaker so you just allow it to mix okay this is uh the candela gray or silver gray as ethan mason pavement called it honed stone beautiful stone it's quite dense 22 mil thick but it's not as thick as what it used to be years ago it used to be a lot thicker than that but you can see the back's calibrated and what we've got to try and make sure that that slab adheres to the mortar. And sandstone has a very high porosity, so it's going to suck the water out the mortar. Okay, so what we've got to do, we've got to slurry the back of that with some Easy Prime. You are there, aren't you? Yeah, okay. Um, no. Got a client watching there now at the moment, so it's absolutely fine. And I'm going to explain this. So what we've had to do here, we wanted this part of this next step to be stable. It's not about just putting an MOT type one down because that just wouldn't be enough. So what we've done, we've concreted, concreted this pad stone here for this path coming up. And I'll explain about that in another video about the concrete. But the important thing is what you want here is that you don't want the concrete here, okay, sucking the water out of the mortar that we're laying the slab on. Okay, because if it does, it'll just delaminate and then you'll get water, you'll get hydrostatic pressure working along the slab then and eventually the, the, the bedding mortar and the slab will delaminate. So that's not good. So what we've done, we've waterproofed it now with an SBR. Okay, it's not rocket science. So now we are going to lay some slabs. I just want to show you this and uh, I will explain at this point I, I am on my knees here because I'm hiding my shoes because I haven't got boots on which I should have but I just point that out to you now so at least I'm being honest I suppose I don't know so anyway this is uh, it's not easy grout in here we have easy prime okay and as you can see we put it on the back of this three by two slab you can see it on there and what I've actually done is I've actually coated it all over everything completely some people say just put it around the edge so you don't get your fingers along the edge. I, so, I think it's so important to seal the old slab. Certainly on these steps here, you don't want these to delaminate. So what's going to happen is that slurry, okay, that slurry is going to ensure that that slab beds on to the bedding water. And back again. Here we are in here. It's a mixer and there is mortar in there. Again, not exactly rocket science. The biggest question that I get asked regular is what ratio of sand to, and cement do you use for a good laying bedding mortar for slabs? Well, I just use totally, this is down to me, Ian Power now, right? Because years ago, I'd always use four sharp, one soft, one cement. 
but now it's all sharp, completely all of it sharp. And that sharpness, the aggregate within the sand, is going to make sure that's going to give it some integrity in the bedding water. I've put hardly any water in there at all because the moisture is in the sand. You see so many people, first thing they do, what they do is chuck it in, in the mixer, is the half a bucket of water, a bucket in some cases, then they chuck the sand in and then it's all sloppy and they end up having to tip it out into the wheelbarrow and then start reloading again. So there's very minimal water in there. Maybe on this occasion too much again because I've let it mix while I was doing these videos. Let's get on with it and let's lay this slab. Well here we are, this is what we call a full bed and as you can see it's totally flat all the way so that's going to ensure that you get full contact with the slab with the bedding mortar which is so important okay the last thing you want is having voids in your bedding mortar and that's where the water can accumulate you get the free store effect and guess what your slab's going to come off well we've turned the mixer off with Kyle has and the reason for that is that you can hear it better no hip-hop music okay no retro music, you can hear the full detail. Okay, so what we've got here is a full bed of mortar, okay? And you can see it's perfectly flat. That's going to ensure that we get full contact with the slab. The last thing you want is voids underneath your paving. And this is where water can accumulate, okay? Through condensation, when the ground starts heating up in, in, this, in the summertime, even though the, the water can't get down, you will get condensation. It starts dropping on the, on the bottom of the slab, down into that little divot. Then you're going to get the freeze thaw effect and eventually that slab's going to pop. Not in this case. <laughs> 